Coding Hopefuls. Welcome back to my channel, Coding with Amanda. Well, I am Amanda Chalk, CCSP, Certified Coding Specialist Position Based, Auditor, Coder, you know, Mentor, Coding Coach, and your girl for all things medical coding. That's right, baby. So if you're not into medical coding, you're probably on the wrong channel because we're only going to talk about medical coding, baby, and I'm going to give you the drip every week okay so again my experience is so long i've been in the game for 15 years and i'm ready to share all right so this week we're gonna go ahead and talk about what to do when you get out of school and you just can't find a freaking job okay it happens to everybody it happens to me but before i tell you about that let's go ahead and thank all of my new subscribers who subscribe to my channel i just want to thank you so much for taking the time to watch the videos. The videos are very informative and it might, you know, make you want to actually be a medical coder, okay? So, I just wanna thank you for that. And if you are a newbie to my channel, if you are new, brand new, go ahead and watch the video to the end. And then if you like it, if you like what I'm saying, then subscribe to the channel, okay? All right, so let's get back into, you know, what to do when you get out of school and you can't find a job. So listen, I'm going to tell you, I've been there, I've done that, all right? I think it happens to the best of us, okay? I was so upset, y'all, when I got out of school and I had got my little certificate and I couldn't get a job. It seemed like I was just, you know, sending out my resume, you know, like, to everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. And it still, like, seemed like nobody would hire me, okay? So this is a word of advice, you know, from a person that's been in the game for a long time. Dude, you cannot give up. Don't give up. If I had a gave up on my dream, you know, of working in the coding field, then I wouldn't be sitting where I am today, working comfortably from home, making great money, okay? And I'm a coder, a coder and an auditor, okay? So if I had a gave up, this would have never happened. So you can't just, you know, get frustrated and be like, ah, oh, man, forget it. I'm going to go back to manufacturing. What you want to do? You want to work in those type of jobs for the rest of your life? You absolutely can't give up. So on today's video, I'm just going to tell you a couple things that might would help you out a little bit. So the very first piece of advice that I'm going to give you is to start networking with people that are experienced that are already in the field. You know, I hate to tell you this, but... You know, we're a very elite little group of people, okay? And your hometown has an elite little group of coders, okay? And, and coding supervisors and coding managers. And in this field, you will see somebody again. So that's the reason why you absolutely should never burn bridges with people, okay? You just you just can't. You, you will never understand how I've seen different people in different jobs that I've went to, different coders. So... Don't ever burn a bridge because you never know when you'll need that person again. Take my advice, okay? But anyway, you want to start networking with the experienced coders because experienced coders can tell you, you know, who's who, who's hiring, you know, what jobs are available, what is what niche you need to get in, whether it's inpatient, outpatient. They have experience, and that's the reason why they can go ahead and tell you these things and give you these wise words. So, you know, absolutely network. That's what happened to me. Um, when I first got out of school, you know, I was faxing off my resumes and all this stuff to people, but I knew some a lady, right? And um, this particular lady who I thank so much to this day, like I consider her like a mentor. She's so smart and savvy in the coding business, okay? But anywho, I'm not going to say her name on camera but because she may not want that. But anywho, this lady took me under her wing. And I started working at a rheumatology office. And the only reason why the rheumatologist really hired me with no experience, really, besides just working in the ER, checking out, checking in and out people, he hired me because of her, okay? Because she was an experienced vet, veteran in the business, in the field. And so, you know, he didn't mind letting me come in as long as she kind of, like, watched me. So, of course, he paid her, you know, to, to like, kind of train me and take me under her wing. But it's because of networking that I even, like, found out about her, you know, and who she was and who she was in the field. So that's what I'm saying. Like, get to know the who's who in coding in your local town, city, whatever. You need to get to know people because I guarantee you, you will see 
those people again, okay? Believe me, trust me. Don't burn bridges, all right? And the second thing um, that might help you out, if you know anyone that, looks, that works in your, like, your local doctor's offices, right? This is another tip I can tell you. Like, so I knew somebody who worked in the doctor's office that I used to go go to, right? So I had her to give me a list. Like, and the list had all the doctor's offices in my local town, right? And it had the fax numbers. So, what I did was I simply went home, got my little resume together, honey, and I just started faxing out resumes everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. And, yeah, I did actually get calls back and um, interviews back from faxing off my resume. Actually, the job that I just told you about in the previous example, the, the rheumatologist's office, was a callback from that that fax off when I just was faxing my resume everywhere. Like I had several several people uh, actually calling me back from what I did, but I got hired at that at the rheumatology office, so it was no need to interview anywhere else. You know what I'm saying? So anywho, do that. That's another that's another good tip that I can give to you. You know, don't be afraid to fax off that resume. You got to get your name out there, and if you don't fax off your resume, then how are you gonna get your name out there? So hey, closed mouths don't get fed, baby. Okay. So if you want to close some jars, you absolutely have to let people know what you do who you are, okay? And they'll never know that if you don't send that resume out, okay? So that's the second thing that I can tell you, okay? Now, let me reflect back to my little notes here. Uh, oh, the third thing, I told y'all I have so much to share with y'all that you might want to do that could, that might will help you when you can't, when you get out of school and you can't find a freaking job is you might want to consider starting in a position that is not medical coding, okay? So you can have the opportunity to move up in the company, okay? That's another strategy that you could do, okay? So I'm going to tell you, I went from that rheumatology office to being a charge entry clerk, okay? So a charge entry clerk and a coder is not the same thing. Popular to contrary belief. Some people think that it is, but it's not because a charge entry clerk Somebody's just handing you a ticket. We used to call them call it a trip ticket. And all you would do was just simply enter everything that the doctor said. That's not really coding, okay? Coding requires skills. Data entry, that's that doesn't require any skills because you're just, you know, entering numbers, you know, that you see. Okay. But anywho, I started I started off in uh charge entry and then I moved to a medical billing office, okay? And I started doing medical billing. Uh, with that office, when the job, my charge entry job got ready to shut down, I started doing um, medical billing then and uh, accounts receivable, posting payments, all of that kind of stuff. But it was still within the, the medical group, okay? So I was working for the same medical group, but just moving around jobs, okay? So finally, when I seen an orthopedic surgery coder job pop up on the web, I'm like, hmm, okay. I got my certification, but I don't have no experience, but I'm going to see if I can apply for that job so I could just transfer. Sometimes you got to do an inner facility transfer. Okay. That's what I'm telling you. Like work for a company, like uh, maybe in North Carolina, like for instance, we have no bond. Okay. That's a, that's a big group here. And we have uh Wake Forest, you know, Baptist Hill. Okay. That's another big group here. So maybe you start somewhere else in that company. You know, maybe you are accounts receivable, billing. You start somewhere like that. And then when you see a coding job pop up open, you kind of wiggle your way into that position. That's what I did. That's how I got my orthopedic surgery coder job. Okay. Actually, I was a coder then. When I worked in the rheumatology office, I was really technically just charge entry and billing. I wasn't even a coder. Like, you're not a coder until you can look at a, at a physician's note and you can tell the physician what to charge. Okay? He's not telling you what he's going to charge. You can look at that note and look at that documentation and actually decipher what the position is supposed to charge until you can do that until you can know what history exam and medical decision making is you're not a real coder you just charge entry okay so there is a difference and that's the reason why you know coders get paid so well because we have to know so many things okay so anywho those are three things that maybe could help you out in the field you know i know it's frustrating you guys i know i know i know because i have been there and i have done that believe me baby i got so very frustrated but 
my drive to move forward and not want to go back to my old to my previous job that kept me going that kept me faxing those resumes okay that that kept me doing the the unknown that kept me moving into building positions because i didn't want to go back okay so if you want to go forward baby you will try something new you will try whatever you need to try to get your foot in the door so you can get your coding job okay because now i work from home you know i make great great money i work for the federal government people say that's hard to do too to get in there but i got in there okay and I do contract work. So, you know, I make money on all ends, all right? And so you can do that too. If I can do it, you can do it, okay? So don't let anybody tell you that you can't. Anywho, I'm going to get ready to hop on out of here. That's this week's video. That, those are my tips and tricks for when you get out of school and you're frustrated and you can't find a job. I just told you what to do, okay? So I hope you follow my advice. If you like the content, honey, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button because I'll be back every single week giving you the real drip, okay? From an experience.